Hi everyone, this is Miss Mason reading Because of Mr. Interrupt by Rob Bourier. We're still in part one, page 48, November. Luke, it was November. Apparently that meant time for Mr. Interrupt to get crazy with his math ideas again. I think he was on a mission to put us through his math gauntlet, dollar word. We're going to figure out the number of blades of grass in the soccer field, he announced one day. What? You're going to make us count grass? Peter yelled. That's nuts. No way. Nick was hollering. Dollar word. How are we supposed to do that? Tommy said. I raised my hand. Yes, Luke. You mean we're going to estimate the total number? Right, I said. Yes and no, Mr. Shrupp said. We'll actually do some calculating to get a reasonable approximation. I was beginning to think that Peter might be right. Yes, it's going to be difficult, but I know that we can do it. Mr. Trupp said. Besides, if everything we did were easy, then you wouldn't learn anything. We need to be challenged in order to learn. Mr. Trupp was right about it being a challenge. None of us had any idea how we were going to count blades of grass, but we did. First, we decided we wanted to count 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter squares, which was my suggestion after Mr. Trupp talked to us about sampling and how government gets its population numbers. Then we measured the squares on a large piece of cardboard and cut them out. So we were left with a piece of cardboard that had a 10 centimeter square missing in the middle. That was Mr. Trupp's suggestion. Now it would be easy to toss our piece of cardboard around the field and collect random 10 centimeter samples. So far so good. Time to head outside. We marched downstairs and out the front doors by the office. Then we stampeded down the sidewalk until the end of the building. The soccer field awaited us on the side of our school. Peter. She was bent over counting blades of grass. It was the perfect opportunity. Mr. T was busy helping someone else, so he wasn't going to see me in action. I gripped the cardboard with my best hold, dipped my knees a little, and let the frisbee fly. It zinged through the air on its mission like a missile from a fighter jet. Bullseye! Ow! Leslie shrieked. My tushy! I almost died of laughter. I dropped to my knees. I laughed so hard. I couldn't stop. I couldn't catch my breath either. Lots of other kids were laughing too. Lexi yelled something about her tushy and me being a jerk. Everyone that missed out on the fun kept asking, what happened? What happened? Everyone except Mr. T. He came right over to make sure Lexi wasn't injured. Lexi was holding her tushy and hopping up and down saying, ow, over and over. She's a total drama queen. Usually a teacher checks the spot that hurts, but I don't think Mr. T was real big on that this time. Peter, that's not funny, Mr. T said to me. Someone could have been injured. You're lucky you didn't hit anyone in the eye. Go sit down. I sat down. It was no big deal. If you'd been there, you'd agree. It was super funny. Luke. We spread out all over the place, tossing our cardboard squares and counting the blades of grass. Peter, however, was flinging a square like a frisbee, even though Mr. Interrupt had warned us it wasn't a toy and to be careful throwing it. Maybe if things had turned out differently that day, they would have turned out differently in the end, too. I think what happened on the soccer field just set us up for a disaster later on. So Peter was being his typical sneaky self, flinging his square and counting here and there. But as soon as he spotted Alexia over her square, he wound up and sailed a beauty in her direction. It was a perfect delivery, dollar word, that tattooed, dollar word, her fanny. Ow, she screeched, like, what the heck? What happened? Mr. Trupp instantly twisted, dollar word, around. Like, someone just hit me right in my tushy with their square, Alexia cried. The old buttocks again, huh? Mr. Trupp said. You okay? Yes, Alexia said. Mr. Trupp turned and looked out at us. We were laughing our heads off, and I swear I saw him smile as he shook his head at the whole scene. Peter, come over here, please, he said. Why me? Peter complained. Because we all know how much you like the buttocks area, don't we? Classic Mr. Interrupt. Instead of blowing up, he was funny about it, but in a serious way. He sat Peter out for the rest of the activity and had a talk with him. Peter didn't pretend to be innocent, but like I said, I think this set us up for later. The whole thing seemed funny. No one got hurt. Peter set out. That was it. Once we finished to tossing and counting, we headed inside, 
where we learned how to average all our data. Then we took our average number and used it to predict the soccer field total by figuring out how many of our squares could fit inside the field. The number of blades of grass in our soccer field equals 77,530,000 This isn't an exact answer, of course, but it is an accurate estimate based on all our calculations. Phew! I learned so much doing that project. It wasn't the stupid easy stuff I was used to getting from my teachers, that's for sure. We were math wizards. Dollar word. Jessica. Act 3, Scene 1. Things weren't going well. I had betrayed Alexia by being nice to Danielle, thinking that this was what Belle Teal would have done, and then Danielle suddenly turned on me. Without warning, I knew Alexia was behind it. I was alone, except for the friends I had in my books, like Belle and Anna. In November, Mr. Terrupt introduced us to a book that was the whole class would be reading, The Summer of the Swans by Bessie Byers. I had never read this one, or anything by Ms. Byers for that matter. This book won the Newbery Medal back in 1971, Mr. Terrupt said. He held the book up. It's not full of action like you guys tend to think of as action but it is a beautifully written book that's going to give us an awful lot to think about, learn from, and maybe even change because of. I straightened up. I was excited. Peter moaned. As for Alexia, well, she was somewhere in La La Land. The boys made faces and the girls exchanged glances. Then Mr. Trupp went a step further. We're not just going to read this book, he said. We're going to do an activity with it, an ongoing activity, more like an experience. Now even Alexia was listening, back from outer space. What kind of activity? Peter demanded. Not some sort of stupid book project, I hope. I hate those. No, no project. I don't really like those things either, Mr. Terrupp said. What did he have in mind, I wondered. You're going to make us up like as a character, aren't you? Alexia said. Oh, I love doing that. Get real, Peter said. Will you guys be quiet and let Terrupp finish? Jeffrey said. That worked. No more interruptions, and Mr. Terrupp continued. I want you guys to think about this book. In the story, there's a boy with Down syndrome, that's a mental disorder, named Charlie, and his older sister, not much older than you guys, named Sarah. They have a pretty special relationship. That's what I want all of you to think about, Mr. Terrupp stopped for a second, yet somehow we stayed quiet. He continued. So what you're going to do is visit our collaborative classroom downstairs over the next few weeks. You'll go in groups in the mornings and in the afternoons and simply spend time with those children doing what it is that they do. Mr. Terrupt, I raised my hand. What exactly is the collaborative classroom? Still being relatively new to the school, I didn't know. It's where the retards go, Peter said. Alexia laughed. I hope you'll answer that question a little differently after this experience, Peter, Mr. Terrupp said, his tone very serious. Peter didn't say another word. It's a classroom from children with a range of special needs, Jessica, Mr. Terrupp continued. Some of you are probably a little nervous or even scared. That's why you'll go in groups. I hope you'll feel differently afterwards, too. Act 3, Scene 2 My group consisted of Anna and Jeffrey. I still hadn't quite figured Jeffrey out. On the other hand, I'd been eating lunch with Anna ever since being ostracized by Alexia and her clan. Danielle was back in. I was out. But I didn't want back in. I much preferred my time with Anna. She's quiet, but she's a lot smarter than everyone thinks. She's the only girl smart enough to stay out of Alexia's nonsense. Her mom's advice, she told me. We haven't talked about her mom or any of the stuff I learned from Danielle, and I haven't told her anything about me either. For now, we've kept our secrets, and that's okay. I like Anna. She'd make a great friend to a character in a book or in one of Dad's plays. I know she's going to be a great friend of mine. We were very quiet on our first trip downstairs. Not one of us uttered a single sound. My hands longed to hold a book, but I hadn't brought one, so I bit at my fingernails and cuticles instead. It's funny how when you're anxious to get somewhere, the journey seems to take forever. And when you're not too anxious, the journey is over in no time. My journey from California lasted about as long as a ride on the Viper roller coaster, and our journey to the collaborative classroom took no time at all either. When we arrived, it was clear the teacher was expecting us. Hi, guys, she said. Welcome to our collaborative classroom. I'm Miss Kelsey. 
We introduced ourselves, and then she led us inside. This is Joey. Mrs. Kelsey pointed to a little boy with boogers all over his face. Can you say hi to our friends, Joey? Miss Kelsey asked. Joey waved in our direction. A gigantic smile stretched across his face. And this is James over here, Miss Kelsey said, pointing to a different boy. James looked pretty normal to me. He didn't say hi to us, though. He didn't even look at us. This is Emily over here. The little girl Miss Kelsey pointed to was very cute. She had drool all over her face and hands and arms, and she moaned a lot. A different teacher used sign language as he tried to communicate with Emily. The teacher struggled to maintain eye contact with her. She told Emily to say hi. That's Mrs. Warner helping Emily right now. Emily tried to say hi to us, but I could tell she wasn't particularly good at talking. There were a few other children in the room, and Miss Kelsey eventually introduced us to all of them. I became distracted at this point because Jeffrey walked over to Joey and started playing the game memory with him. I couldn't believe it. I heard him say, that's a great job, Joey. You're really smart. And Joey smiled. Anna and I were way out with Miss Kelsey and James and Emily to help them do their jobs. Before we left the room, I saw Joey giving Jeffrey a big hug. Act 3, Scene 3. Jobs turned out to be sorting the plastic forks, spoons, straws, and napkins for the cafeteria. Miss Kelsey poured the utensils on the table, and James said, 712. I looked at Anna, puzzled. What do you mean, James? I asked. 712, he said again, looking down at the table. Does he always say 712? I asked. I figured he was yelling out random numbers. No. James is telling us that there are seven. 712 utensils on the table, Miss Kelsey said. 712 utensils on the table, James repeated, this time looking at Anna and me and swaying a little as he stood. Great job, James! Miss Kelsey sounded so excited. You looked at our friends when you said that. Miss Kelsey? Do you mean James is right? Anna asked. Are there really 712? Is it the same amount every day or something? Well, I haven't actually counted them to double check, and no, it's not always 712, but James has never been wrong before, Miss Kelsey said. Anna and I exchanged astonished looks. I was confused. James had done this amazing counting, but Miss Kelsey seemed more excited that he had looked at me. I wanted to ask questions, but decided to wait. I didn't know if asking was appropriate. We finished up the jobs and walked back to get Jeffrey. Act 3, Scene 4 Jeffrey was still playing with Joey, as well as a couple of other kids now. He was helping them paint. Jeffrey, I said. He looked up. We have to go back now. Oh, okay. His shoulders slumped. He turned to the kids. I've got to go, guys. I'll be back soon. Then it was hug time again. We thanked Miss Kelsey and headed back upstairs. We didn't talk on the way through the halls. I think each of us had too many thoughts in our brains. By the time we reached our classroom, Jeffrey was grumpy Jeffrey again. Our very own Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I thought.